Okay, uh, this is Algebra 2 with Trig. Uh, this is actually the matched problem 5 on page 333. I'm also referencing example 4 and theorems uh, 2 and 3. Uh, so if you're following along in the book, page 327 to page 333 is kind of where I'm at in the textbook. This is graphing oblique asymptotes, okay? You're given an equation, f of x equals x squared plus 5 over x plus 1, and you're asked to, um, to graph it. Now, whenever you're graphing something complicated like this, the easiest thing to do is just sort of make yourself a list of all of the asymptotes, the intercepts, the range, the domain, whatever you can write down yourself sort of a list about this equation, then when you go over to your graph, you just sort of start by graphing that list of stuff. And generally, once you've graphed the list of stuff, the, the line that you actually have to draw, you know, it sort of falls out at you really because you have, you know, so much surrounding information. Now, because this is dealing with oblique asymptotes specifically, I'm going to start there. Theorem 3 is what tells you that in order to tell if there's an oblique asymptote, you rewrite this as, you know, mx plus b plus r of x over d of x. And that looks kind of scary, except when you realize that it, it's really just information you're already given. This right here is already your d of x, right? Because this is n of x over d of x notation. So this d of x is going to be the same d of x that goes there. r of x, you can remember that one with, uh, with the word remainder, right? Um, if you'll notice, this is a big fraction but it's also long division. So when you perform the long division, you'll be left with a remainder. This will actually be the quote unquote answer to your uh, division problem. So obviously the best place to start here is just by performing the long division. You do x plus one into x squared plus five, and that goes x times. This will be um, x squared, and actually I'm going to leave myself a placeholder here so that I can line up all my terms because that'll actually be x squared plus x. I subtract and I get negative x plus 5. That means that's minus 1 and then I have minus x minus 1 that I am subtracting. This will cancel and my remainder will actually be 6. So the problem becomes y equals x minus 1 plus 6 over x plus 1. Now to tell if there's an oblique asymptote you look at this um, degree and this degree. As long as the numerator is less than the denominator as far as the degree goes, then there is an oblique asymptote. Since there's no x term in the top here, obviously the denominator has the advantage and it's greater. Uh, theorem 3 also tells us that when that's the case, this uh, y equals x minus 1 is the equation for the oblique asymptote. So I take that information then and I sort of add it to my repertoire of info, okay? I say, all right, I know that the equation is x squared plus 5, there, that's prettier, x squared, isn't it? x squared over x squared, um, over x plus 1. So then I also know that I have an oblique um, asymptote at y equals x minus 1. Uh, you can use the equation to find that there's a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 1. There's no horizontal asymptote. Theorem 2 that I talked about earlier is what tells you this. Whenever the degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator, that means no horizontal asymptote. So I make myself a note. No horizontal. Okay. Um, I also know that the domain has to be on um, either side of that vertical asymptote. So here's the, uh, anyway, the domain, and you, and you just sort of keep going, and you make yourself this, this list. I have enough info here for me to graph it, and since I don't have a lot of room, I'm going to skip that, but you can go and do the rest on your own. Oh, um, also, lastly, there's a y-intercept at 5, and you know that because you find a y-intercept by plugging in x equals 0. Obviously, if x equals 0, these two guys go away, and you have 5 over 1, so the y-intercept is 5. Now, you set up your axes, right? Here's the y, here's the x. Um, start by just graphing what you know. I know there's a y-intercept 
at five. I know there's um, a vertical asymptote at negative one. I know that there's an oblique asymptote uh, along this equation, right? Here's negative one, rise over run, and, and I have it sort of there. Ooh, people are trying to call me. Hang on, I will call you back. I am busy. Okay, um, so yes. Then we can tell that the graph sort of has to do like this and pretend that my line went through that dot like it's supposed to. Um, this dot up here, let me get my pointer so you know what I'm talking about. This dot up here lets us know that at least part of the graph exists up here in, in this part of the asymptotes, right? Because it has to go through that point and the asymptotes aren't going to let it cross there, right? So we have to sort of loop the graph around this way because, well, it's, it's going to want to stay away from the asymptotes. Now, um, if you've looked at the answer, you know that the other part of the graph is actually down here. Well, how did they know that? Well, that's a great question. Uh, but to figure that out, you basically just make a t-chart. You know that the, here, you know the equation, right, up here. So just plug in, like here's x equals negative 4. Plug that in up here, and you'll get a y value down here. And then you know that it has to curve around because of the asymptotes. Now, you can find yourself a couple of points. You know, if you're nervous about looping it around, if you're not sure that, that, if you're not confident that it loops around, then find yourself a couple points. You know, plug in negative three and negative two also and find, and find you know, their values. And that'll help you sort of know where actually to put your points. Um, but that's how to find the asymptote and, and what to do with it once you find it.